I have a bit of a weakness for old media. It's not just the aesthetics. I really do find reading the old articles can be quite interesting. I was recently flipping through this 1946 Time magazine when I came across an intriguing tech update. I couldn't quite visualize it though, so I started to poke around online. And that's when I fell down a rabbit hole. I found a data sheet for them from a 1960s GE catalog. Unfortunately, this is only a moderately decent quality scan, so if anyone has a copy of the catalog this originally came out of, please let me know. There just isn't much information available beyond that. There are a couple of industrial promotion videos floating around from various businesses that have produced them over the years, but they just repeat what's in the datasheet. I wasn't even quite sure how big they were until I found this model for HO scale railroads that can give you a pretty good idea. Now, this is probably where I would have dropped the whole thing, but then I thought, why not check eBay? Maybe I could find a manual or something? Instead, I found this. A mint-in-box, new old stock, micro-encabulator. And it didn't even cost that much. Now, there's even less information available about these online, but they're more or less the same thing as a turbo-encabulator, just scaled down for smaller installations. And since this is the 80th anniversary of their original invention in 1944, I thought, maybe I should do something special. So I'm going to dip my toe into a whole new video format today. An unboxing. Let's take a look at this thing. Oh dear. Oh. <laughs> Look at that. Okay. Oh, oh, it's not light. Okay, let's see what's in here. Okay. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. You gotta see this. There it is. Ah, oh, it's beautiful. Let's get out of the box. Okay, there we go, there we go. Put that over here. Okay, first impressions. This really is prefabulated amulite. Look at this. The whole thing. I thought that was marketing a wink. I really did, but this is the real deal. They were not cutting any corners here. I don't think I've ever seen a piece this big before. This would cost several hundred dollars today. Wow. So no dingle arms on this one. Those only came on the larger models, but the, the Tofa trunnions here are so small that any cosinusoidal drift would be pretty minor and a quick adjustment manually once or twice a week would replenerate everything just fine. The nodal interactions wouldn't change. So this is the ambiphagent vein shaft. So this must be the marzal vein. Oh, it's so delicate. Someone must have hand tuned each one to be perfectly balanced. Yeah, you can see the little needle file marks where someone was filing away a couple milligrams at a time. I mean, that makes sense. You're never going to prevent internal procession of, unless it's perfectly balanced. 
But wow, modern systems don't bother with this at all since MEMS-based nodal interaction sensors allow any microcontroller to negate the relative motion of conventional conductors and fluxes easily and cheaply. But I guess if you're stuck doing things purely electromechanically, this is your only choice. That's so cool. And these panendermic semi-boiloid stator slots, they're amazing. How would you even make that before CNC? Hell, before NC. Maybe, maybe if you milled them using a pattern follower and then made the pattern by following a big long list of coordinate pairs hand calculated by slide rule. And then maybe if you used a pantograph to shrink that down so the errors would reduce, I don't know. Those old machinists were a breed apart, I tell you. Okay. Oh. Okay, I think this, I think this is where the optional quasi-static regenerative oscillator could attach for use in explosive atmospheres. That's funny. I really thought that the use of anhydrous nagling pins enabled the cryptonastic bowling shims to be tankered, but I guess not. This thing really could serve as a full encabulator. That's so cool. Okay, let me open up the panel meters. Oh, interesting. So you can see how it could be set up for barescent score motion, but that would only be needed when running on five phase power. Other than that, it's very clean in here. Just the no blow fuses on the nivel sheave and the polycrapoline circuit breaker. Okay, put that away. So that's the microencabulator. I'm so glad I bought this thing, but I don't think I'm gonna fire it up. Some of those cyanethylated craft paper bearings look pretty crumbly. I think they've been oxidizing and I don't really need to measure inverse reactive current anyway. Maybe if I finally find some unilateral phase detractors, but they'll have to come up locally. There's no way I'm paying freight on anything that large. But yeah, thanks for joining me on this little experiment. Um, I don't think it's the kind of thing I'll do very often. Maybe once a year for a special occasion, but it's been a lot of fun. Cheers.